Hello and welcome to the Diocese of Lansing uh, podcast. I'm David Kerr, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Lansing here in Michigan, where for six days this month, the relics of uh, St. Pio of Petrolicina, also known as Padre Pio, will be touring this diocese, six locations in six days, including upon the feast day of St. Padre Pio, which is the 23rd of September. But where... Will you be able to see, venerate these relics? And why should you be interested in going along? That's just two of the questions that I put a few moments ago to Luciano Lamanarca, who is the founder and the CEO of the St. Pio Foundation. Uh, Luciano, obvious first question. Um, who was, who is Padre Pio? Padre Pio it's, can be our, our brother, it can be our neighbor. Padre Pio is the, probably among the most uh, known and loved saints because it's so contemporary. It can be the person that uh, we can look up to. I like to use a, a, a little expression. It's, it's so vivid, Padre Pio's image and teachings in today's life because it's like your mother picture. So, for instance, my mother passed away for cancer 15 years ago. And I used to have a picture in my wallet of her so to look up and to remember what she taught me and the nice moment we had together. The same way, you have to have an image of Padre Pio, which I have at all time. And I watch and I can have actually an image of the saints. And it reminds me, for instance, what I like most of this authentic picture is that he was smiling. Despite all the several challenges he had, he's a man who who was smiling and many says that P P Padre Pio likes to say jokes and Padre Pio loved to smile but it was very serious when we were talking about church or we were talking about respect to God and prayers. Tell us about the tour of uh, Padre Pio's relics uh, to the Diocese of Lansing later this month. Sure, well we are uh, blessed because despite COVID-19, uh, we received a fair amount of uh, uh, dioceses who requested the relics of Padre Pio to visit their parishes. And I can tell you with my open heart that Lansing has been, uh, has been that, that with more requests than other parishes. My apologies for my English, sometimes I try to not make too many mistakes. Uh, so we have a wonderful uh, full week veneration. Actually, we select the Padre Pio week or the Padre Pio uh, feast days in order to fulfill more our mission to make Padre Pio's legacy better known, but also for, to pray for his intercession so that people get closer to God towards his intercession. So we have, for instance, uh, the veneration, the Dutch of Lansing will start on Saturday, September 19 at the Good Shepherd Catholic Church. Montrose, Michigan. Then we have Sunday, September 20, at San Robert Bellarmine Church in Flushing, Michigan. And then on Monday, September 21st, we have St. John the Evangelist in Davidson. And Tuesday, September 22nd, at the Old St. Patrick Church in uh, Ann Arbor. Well and Wednesday, September 23rd, which is Padre Pio's first day precisely, it's America Cathedral in Lansing. And the veneration will end, the six days veneration will end at the St. John Evangelist Catholic Parish in Free, in Fenton, Michigan. It's a full day activity. Really, very few times we have had so many parishes requesting the relics. It's wonderful, uh, Luciano. And it's also a great privilege for the Diocese of Lansing that the relics are here upon the feast day of St. Pio on the 23rd of September, which is also my uh, youngest daughter's first birthday. And she carries the middle name of Pia, uh, the, the female of uh, Pio. So it's a, it's, it's a, personally, it's a wonderful... Uh, and you are a blessed Pio. man then. Thank you. Um, so why should... As obviously there is a, a, a huge amount of interest already. But for those who uh, are just finding out about this or are unsure if this is something they would want to come along to. Why should people come along to these uh, days of veneration across the Diocese of Lansing? We always pray for a saint. We always ask for God intercession. In our, in our, not all, always in our culture, but we have taught that 
when we pray for a saint intercession in the presence of the relics, the presence of the saints is felt in a more deep ways. I find um, very curious the fact when I when we sponsor the first uh, the first tour of the relics in 2017, that is back in three years ago. 90% of those attending the venerations, they were never able to fly to San Giovanni Rotondo, Petrocina, and never able to go to Italy. Indeed, the devotion was so strong, they knew so much about the saints, like they felt his presence at all times. But what we, we, we are, what we are trying to do is to connect the spiritual needs with the physical needs. We all know that when we go to San Giovanni Rotondo, his body is exposed to the faithful who visit the city, and everybody goes and touch this magnificent uh, tomb of Padre Pio, I mean, the glass that separates the, the body from the faithful. So the same way we have a little part of the saint's body, which the Holy Spirit have lived in, available for veneration. So people might feel this connection. And it's all a very spiritual encounter, spiritual journey that the faithful goes into too through um, during the day of the veneration we do not have to forget that we ask for the intercession of a saint and padre pio has said all time i ask on your behalf so it is we asking god but having a very loyal friend a very loyal saint who has a deep connection with god i guess and has this way of obtaining graces sometimes whatever spiritual not but i would like to add Graces means always, not only when we receive those. Graces means also when we are taught to bear our suffering. We do not have to forget. Sufferings do not go away every time we pray. But we need to bear them. And Padre Pio has taught us very well how to bear it. Knowing how to bear our suffering is an answer to our prayers, especially in today's world. And just for the record, what parts of Padre Pio's body will be venerated yes uh, we in, have a, in, yes we have three first class relics of Padre Pio those are crust of his wounds then we have a cotton guards with blood stains and a lock of his hair wonderful and um wh why you know obviously there's interest these parishes in the diocese of Lansing uh, seeking the relics to come here and interest from from parishioners what, what what would you say is the message of Padre Pio to each of us today? Uh, exactly, perhaps what I mentioned just a bit uh, earlier. I like to say this exactly question I had when I met, when I had a meeting with the, um, the Archbishop of Portland. Uh, the Archbishop was very kind to grant me a meeting and. Uh, when we sat, he asked me the same question, and I reply exactly in the way I have highlighted before. The way we can bear our sufferings, the way we need to pray. We are in a, in a world today where we always pray for the, the most unusual need. We have forgot that a pray means also to pray for the good of our neighbor, for the good of the world. We do not just pray for our good or for our good. I, I can tell you very few times I pray, I, I believe I do have a good connection with Padre Pio. Padre Pio is very dear to me, as I hope I am very dear to him. But very few times I pray for the good of my family, for my own good. Most of the time is give me direction how you want the foundation to be. I want the foundation to be his right hand, the way his will be perpetuated in the United States of America to do good in this world on his behalf. So this message will be, don't forget to love God, to love each other, and that he is just an example how you can bear the sufferings, or the sufferings, sorry for, again, for my Italian language, but being also an happy man. In the suffering, he, he found the grace of God. And this is a struggle because every time, as a human being, uh, David, you might agree, sometime you and I woke up with the wrong food from the bed and we knew that there was going to be a wrong day ahead of us. And then I just keep forgetting if there was a man there every day, was just sleeping a few hours per day and re received visits from hundreds, if not thousands of people and dedicate his life to the human being, what my suffering will be.
Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, you know, Padre Pio's life is quite remarkable. You've referenced the fact that he had wounds in his hands, the stigmata, the the, the wounds of, of Christ on the cross. He had six wounds in total, five known, one not known. What was the one that wasn't known? The one that Jesus bare his crosses. He's, he, and he's, he says that the first time to John Paul II. And very few times, very few people knew. Now, of course, in the new books, have uh, this fact has been told because indeed those who were visiting Padre Pio, even the doctor, were all the time uh, curing and putting guards on the of the of the sides where Jesus was bearing crosses. So there are five known, and the sixth one it was not it. He had six wounds, but those visible were five. And what, and what do not. you? What are we to make? What do you make of the the you know the claims that? Uh, during his life, St. Pio levitated, not, not, not unknown amongst other saints, but rare amongst the rest of us, that he levitated in prayer, that, that he bilocated, that he was seen in two places at the same time. What, 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 what do you uh, make of those claims of this great saint? Sure, well, people call them sup uh, supernatural powers. I call them just virtues. Virtues because I do believe that uh, Padre Pio indeed was a human being, but he was a saint. As a saint, he had certain powers that are not available to our common human beings. But to, to arrive to that level, and many documented uh, something that it's inexplicable, and I believe that the best is to remain in that, in that way, because... Yes, we know that sometimes people have said that Padre Pio was on a high of the church and then all of a sudden they saw another part of the church. People have testified for that. I have, um, I had my own miracle and my own ways when I sometime Padre Pio has shown his direction for me. Uh, I do believe though that those are true and those are honest uh, testimonials that those close to him has released. And I really, I commend, I do believe those are true because I do believe God sent his best sons in the most difficult times. This is a difficult time. We don't have to forget Padre Pio was born and lived throughout the World War I and World War II. And your entire life and work are intertwined with the, uh, the life and the legacy of St. Pio. You're even from Puglia uh, in, in, in Italy. Uh, not far from where Padre Pio healed from himself. So what does Padre Pio mean to, to you, Luciano? It means everything, I will say. Um, it means really much as a father. It's a father who has taught me since I am here. Look, look, when I was in Puglia, my devotion to Padre Pio was not as strong as it became here. For one simple reason, sometimes we give, we give things for granted. For me, going to Padre Pio or the, to, the, to the cave of the Archangel Michael was an annual routine. My mother was bringing us in pilgrimage once per year, and everybody goes to Padre Pio. It's just one hour and 50 minutes driving. Why you, why you want to go? And then when I came here, because I've been, you might recall that my main profession is an opera singer. I'm training opera singer at the beginning. was singing for all these Italian-American organizations. And they have this deep devotion to Padre Pio and even visited the country. So I get curious at first, but then I see their faith. Faith in this country is something that is cultivated. I don't want to admit or to, to make a challenge between what, how the faith is cultivated in Italy here, but I believe the faith of the United States of America people in the Catholic world, it's a faith that is tangible. You can feel it. I feel it more here, actually than I feel sometimes in Italy. Because it's something you cultivate, it's not given for granted. So it's some things you attach to. And Padre Pio became a father here. Of course, the, 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 he became um, um, a source of uh, energy or, uh, or uh, gratitude where in 2014, you know, long story short, he has blessed, uh, we believe, my wife and I, that he intercedes for me and my wife to have our son, the only son we have. We have tried many times. We were told from 2010, we had a big miscarriage when my wife was almost uh, five months pregnant, that very difficult pregnancies, very difficult to have a child. But indeed, we had, we had Sebastian, the most beautiful son, 
the most wonderful boy. Uh, he loves Padre Pio, he knows everything is about Padre Pio, but we believe in his intercession. We start praying to him, and there is one specific fact, actually, that came to my mind. As a, as a, a human being, I was losing my faith in 2014, and I told him clearly, don't let me do mistakes that people do when they lose their faith. Well, December 22, we had the answer. Sebastian, my wife was pregnant again after a few years. And uh, September 3rd, the, the year after, Sebastian was born. I, we founded the foundation in 2014. And since then, my goal has been through the foundation, though the member of the board of directors and advisory boards, is to make sure his legacy and his teachings are known to the people. Because it goes all back to the education, to educate people. This is a saint who died in 1968. It's pretty much contemporary saints. This is the way he lived. We are all called to be saints. Of course, we are not all Padre Pio. In our own distinguished life, we can make a remarkable life in a, in a, in a sainthood way. Luciano, thank you very much for uh, making the time to speak to us. I see some lovely uh, photographs of your son, Sebastian, over your shoulder. God bless him and yes. thank you, St. Pio, for, 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 for his life. And uh, we will put the, the details of the tour uh, around the Diocese of Lansing, uh, which takes place later this month of the relics, uh, on our website, so everybody's aware of it, and to link to your website as well. Thank you so very much. Uh, I thank you, David. Diocese. Yes, and I thank, thank you, 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 the bishops, and all the priests who have allowed us to bring this science of Padre Pio to the faithful of the world. Thank you. And perhaps maybe you could just end with a, a little prayer. Maybe I think you may have a prayer or a prayer of Padre Pio. Sure. I always like to say that the, uh, Padre Pio's most powerful prayer was his most known. Stay with me, Lord. Stay with me, Lord. When you walk through a storm. Oh, yeah. Stay with me, Lord, for it is necessary to have you present so that I do not forget you. You know how easily I abandon you. Stay with me, Lord, because I am weak and I need your strength, that I may not fall to so often. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my life, and without you I am without fervor. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my light, and without you I am in darkness. Stay with me, Lord, to show me your will. Stay with me, Lord so that I hear your voice and follow you. Stay with me, Lord, for I desire to love you very much and always be in your company. Stay with me, Lord, if you wish me to be faithful to you. Stay with me, Lord, for as poor as my soul is, I want it to be a place of consolation for you, a nest of love. Stay with me, Jesus, for it is getting late and the day is coming to a close and life passes. Death, judgment, eternity approaches. It is necessary to renew my strength so that I will not stop along the way, and for that I need you. It is getting late and dead approaches. I fear the darkness, the temptations, the dryness, the cross, the sorrows. Oh, how I need you, my Jesus, in these nights of exile. Stay with me tonight, Jesus, in life with all the dangers. I need you. Let me recognize you as your disciples did the breaking of the bread so that the Eucharistic communion be the light which disperses the darkness, the force which sustains me, the unique joy of my heart. Stay with me, Lord, because of the hour of my death. I want to remain united to you, if not by communion, at least by grace of love. Stay with me, Jesus. I do not ask for divine consolation because I do not merit it, but the gift of your presence, oh yes, I ask this of you. Stay with me, Lord, for it is you alone I look for, your love, your grace, your will, your heart, your spirit, because I love you and ask no other reward but to love you more and more. With a firm love, I will love you with all my heart while on heart, while, while on earth, and I continue to love you perfectly during all eternity. Amen. Amen. St. Pio, pray for us. Luciano Lamanarca, uh, grazie mille. Thank you very much for uh, being with us uh, today. Grazie a te. Thank you, David. Have a blessed day.